Richmond, Advisory Council on Historic Preservation Communications and Public Affairs Specialist, and welcome to Preservation Perspectives, the ACHP podcast. It's Native American Heritage Month, and I recently spoke with Christina Rose, a graduate assistant at the C.H. Nash Museum at Chukalisa at the University of Memphis in Memphis, Tennessee. Chukalisa is a Native North American mound site discovered in the 1930s. Now my interview with Christina Rose. Welcome, Christina Rose, a graduate assistant at uh, the C.H. Nash Museum at Chukalisa in Memphis, Tennessee. Hello. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for joining us on uh, in Native American Heritage Month, uh, a great time to be talking about uh, this site. Can you tell us a bit about the history? Um, well, Chukalisa is an ancient Native American village and mound site. Uh, it saw four distinct phases of occupation between the years say, roughly 1000 CE to 1550 CE, uh, which is essentially the entire span of what we call the Mississippian period. Um, the last occupation, the final occupation of the site took place during the late Mississippian period, which is 1400 to 1550 CE. Um, and this is the one that we know most about. Uh, we have the most evidence for it. Most of the archeological work that was done on site uncovered artifacts from this time period. Um, and that work took place, uh, it started in really the late 30s, 1930s, early 1940s. It was interrupted by World War II um, and then carried on post-war through the late 80s. Uh, the most significant amount of work was done uh, under the leadership of C.H. Nash himself in the 1950s and 1960s. So we're not digging anymore, as you might expect, but we are still taking care of the site and the artifacts. Who is C.H. Nash then? And when, and it was back in the 1400s that you believe the site was last inhabited by um, indigenous people? Yes, it seems to be uh, the late 1400s to the early 1500s CE. Um, there's kind of anecdotal record of it in uh, De Soto's journals when the Spanish came through the region. They never uh, visited this site specifically, um, but they seem to have known about it. Uh, at least that we think that they're referring to Chakalisa. Um, we don't actually know what the site was called, if anything, by the people who lived here. Chukalisa is a modern Choctaw word. The, the Choctaw called it Chukalisa, so Nash adopted it as the official uh, name for the site. Um, and Nash was a, C.H. Nash himself was a pretty well-respected archaeologist um, in the area. Uh, he worked for the state of Tennessee uh, and became a uh, full professor of archaeology and anthropology at the University of Memphis. Uh, and it's the University of Memphis that still uh, owns and operates the museum and the mound site. So what will a visitor be able to see of this ancient civilization if they come to visit? Um, you'll be able to actually walk around the mound site and the village site itself. Um, we have two mounds. Which is unusual. Uh, we have the big platform mound to the north of the mound, uh, older mound to the west, and these flank uh, kind of a sunken ceremonial plaza, which is where um, anything communal would have happened. Sporting events, religious activities, social gatherings, that sort of thing uh, would have taken place in that plaza. We have a really nice uh, and very accurate replica house uh, that actually houses its own display of artifacts objects that would have been typical for a late Mississippian house. Um, we are a certified arboretum, so we have our own half mile nature trail uh, that links to the rest of the Teo Fuller State Park uh, trail system. We are kind of in the middle of the park. Uh, and we also have the museum itself, right, which houses a really nice exhibit hall. Um, and we have lots of really cool artifacts that range from kind of the very first occupation of this site by prehistoric people. So, you know, Clovis, Folsom, right on through um, to obviously uh, we focus a lot on the Mississippian era, particularly the late Mississippian period. Um, our pottery, I think, is really nice, although we have uh, some nice lithics as well, um, in addition to organic materials that have survived. Um, and we also, uh, 
include modern cultural heritage objects and kind of traditions from the Native American groups who still call this region home, uh, in particular the Choctaw and the Chickasaw, uh, which includes uh, actually a lot of our signage. We made a, we're very proud to have uh, Choctaw and Chickasaw like language and traditions um, really highlighted inside of the museum uh, in addition to the ancient artifacts. So how involved are the local Indian tribes in um, the museum and the site? Um, there was more involvement in the past. In the 60s and 70s, there was a Choctaw family that lived on site. Um, that's no longer the case. Um, but we do still you know, work in uh, conjunction with uh, the Choctaw and the Chickasaw to make sure that we're representing them the way they you know, would approve of being represented. Um, and also because it's important to highlight the fact that you know, indigenous peoples are still here. Um, and they, you know, they didn't go anywhere. They still need to be involved in representations of ancient life, ancient indigenous peoples, um, in addition to you know, modern traditions. Um, so we, we do try to incorporate their input. Um, and yeah, we've got, especially the Choctaw beadwork we have is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and that actually also includes, we have a local Choctaw artist, Rosie Bell, who makes beadwork, uh, jewelry, earrings and bracelets and all that for us that we sell in the gift shop to help not only her as an artist, but also her community. So all everything that, we do have a small gift shop on site in front of the museum and everything we sell there is from a native artist to help um, you know, support indigenous artwork. Now, I, I understand that uh, Chekalusa is a national historic landmark. Yeah. When did that happen? How did that come about? Um, we were designated a national historic landmark in 1994. Um, and it really comes down to the fact that we have two well-preserved mounds on the site. Uh, most Mississippian mounds, well, actually most mounds full stop, Hopewell, Adena, there's a whole suite of uh, mound building uh, cultures, prehistoric cultures. Most of them have been lost. They've been plowed down. Um, so the fact that we have two mounds on site in addition to a village ridge, a plaza, um, and the fact that the site produced so much arche archeological material and there's such a range of it and of such high quality um, that we were given the designation of National Historic Landmark, um, which is pretty exciting. Why is it important to tell Chuckalisa's story? Um, it's important to tell Chuckalisa's story because it's one um, an example of uh, a village type or you know a culture type that was very prevalent in the Mississippi Valley, but also in the Ohio Valley. So kind of the Mississippi Valley and East, right? Um, that you don't necessarily get to see all that often. Um, young United States expanded westward. Um, lands were given out to farmers. These sites weren't recognized, like they didn't understand what they were. Um, and so we lost a lot of them. It's important to tell Chakalisa's story because it's still here first and foremost, um, but also because we put a lot of significance on, you know, like major, earthworks on major um, like monumental architecture. And when we say that, we kind of think about the Mesoamerican pyramids or the Great Wall of China or all that kind of thing. And these earthwork sites are no less a feat of engineering, but we don't really talk about that as a culture. And we need to because they're amazing. And getting to stand on top of the platform mound is you can walk up onto it um, and look down onto the plaza beneath you is really impressive and impactful in a way that, you know, just reading about them or even looking at them from afar um, doesn't really convey. And Jacalisa also, um, because it was abandoned before uh, European contact, it's a uh, I guess, pristine in its way. Um, and it seems to have held its own in the complex world of Mississippian politics and culture. Um, we're not very far from Cahokia, right, which is a 
giant mound complex located just outside of St. Louis. So we're in Memphis. We're really not far. Um, and Chuckalesis seems to have held its own. It was never, as far as we can tell, like a satellite of Cahokia, which is fascinating in its own right. Um, that it was you know, a significant enough settlement to not just be subsumed into the Cahokia culture. Why is it important for people to visit your site? Why, what would you say to someone um, uh, young and old about visiting? About visiting? Um, I would say truthfully much the same as why it's important to tell Chuckalisa's story. Come and see these monuments and the artifacts that you know were uncovered uh, from the excavation work. So they're really beautiful artifacts. They're very high, you know, the high skill went into these and just getting to experience uh, these things, artifacts, the mound site itself. Um, we have a hands-on archeology span lab where people can come through and actually physically interact with ancient materials. Um, you really start to understand how complicated and how high level um, the social organization was, the political organization, the religious ideas, just how amazingly cool these cultures were. Um, and in particular, the mound site, even when you look up on it, it looks cool. But when you walk all the way up and look down, you really understand how high up you are. And it's entirely man-made. And it's amazing. Um, I think that's why people should come, to just start to understand that these cultures were every bit as complex in every sense as the ones that we talk, you know, that we focus on, that we focus on in our culture, the Mesoamerica, the Egyptians in, you know, in Egypt, all of the great, you know, ma you know, monumental architecture cultures, the native North Americans were every bit as advanced and every bit as complicated and standing on top of a mound really lets you experience that and start to rethink um, the way you think about history. Why is it important to preserve sites such as this? I think we've done a less than stellar job historically um, of, of recognizing the uh, contribution and the complexity and you know, the value of indigenous North American societies in particular for any number of reasons. Um, and preserving sites like this, uh, now that we're finally, I think, starting to, you know, pay attention as a society to, you know, marginalized people and communities and histories, um, it's important to preserve them so that we, we don't lose this history altogether. Um, it's not to say that modern Native Americans are losing their own history. Their traditions are certainly still intact. Um, but maintaining the ancient sites is, I think, fundamental to a complete understanding or appreciation, maybe a better word, of um, indigenous cultures, particularly ancient cultures. Without a written record, it makes it difficult. So how can people visit? Um, you can come and visit in person. Obviously, we are located uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it's 1987 Indian Village Drive, specifically. Um, we are inside of Teo Fuller State Park, although we're not part of the state park. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, uh, we're currently operating on a reservation-only system, um, and we're restricted to 10 visitors maximum inside the museum at any time. Um, but that being said, please give us a call. Uh, we're at, is it area code 901-785-3160, extension 1, to make a reservation, or you can email us at chuckalisa at memphis.edu. Um, if you can't come and see us in person, uh, we maintain a Facebook page and an Instagram account, and we'd love to hear from you, you know, online as well. So feel free to interact that way. We make weekly uh, Facebook posts, and uh, we've kind of recently resurrected the Instagram account. Uh, one of my fellow graduate assistants is very adept at Instagram, so she's she's posted a lot, and they're really she's really good at it. So follow us on Instagram for sure. And please come see us. Again, 
Christina Rose, graduate assistant at Chekalisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.